my esteemed listeners this tutorial as a sequel to tutorial number 3 on design and analysis of algorithms in general and fundamentals of design and analysis of algorithms in particular in essence presents the predominant problem types that crop up during algorithm design in the limitless sea of problem one encounters in computing there are a few areas that have attracted particular attention from researchers and also algorithmists let us say in the limitless sea of problem in mundane types of problem in umpteen number of problem when an algorithmist faces a particular problem there is a flutter there is a flutter because immediately it is not possible for an algorithmist to think the solution procedure therefore what he or she thinks is to attach the problem in hand to any one of the kinds of problems that has been categorized after all after all these problems are well defined these problems that that is posed to an algorithmist will have a solution but but before venturing into drawing the solution or writing an algorithm for the given problem or problem at hand it is essential it is essential to include this problem under a particular category of problems and then we can do some kind of a exploitation okay exploration should happen in terms of matching the new problem that has recently arrived into any one of the group any one of the groups any one of the types and then the solutions the algorithms already available among these groups or in any one of the type of the category category of the groups the algorithmist will be able to take on the problem very easily okay so therefore any type of problem among the sea of problems among the problem problems galore anyway among the problems right the algorithm has to attack the problem into any one of these categories therefore there is no confusion at all okay any problem any well defined problem can be can belong to any of these standard types of problems they are castigated as predominant problem types it could be sorting searching string matching and processing graph problems geometric problems combinatorial problems and numerical problems we will just go one by one and we will just see and we will gather the fundamentals associated with these problem types okay then we will be enormed okay whenever a problem is given to us we will immediately the first task is we will immediately catch up with the problem by making the problem to uh, attach to any one of these problem types then we will seek solution by searching if there exists a tailor made algorithm or if there exists an algorithm which is already been uh, developed by somebody or if nothing is available we will plan to write an algorithm because these problem types have a rhythm this problem type have uh, have kind of approach which is different from other problem types so every problem type here seven problem types listed over here serves to be universal types of problems okay therefore we will just go one by one okay just digging into nuts and bolts of this problem categories sorting of course sorting is a well known problem uh, should we question that it is a, is it a problem yes it is a problem because uh, whenever we see whenever we see a list which is unordered anybody's first impulse is to arrange it either in ascending order or in descending order because looking at an arranged or arranged list will become great deal easier in order to look from top to bottom or from bottom to up okay bottom to top okay it can be arranged in ascending order and descending order there are many real world applications where sorting matters okay and uh, it may be a dictionary it may be a phone directory it may be uh, selection it may be distribution of things okay it may be 
uh, it may be uh, some kind of uh, arrangement of anything as a matter of fact it could be names it could be numbers it could be real numbers it could be integer numbers okay sorting is a must must in several other applications like uh, see searching becomes very easy if you think if you if the things are sorted okay closest pair problem element uniqueness problem finding finding uh, the first the second the third highest the last and the next last and the next last okay and frequency distribution in statistics construction of frequency construction of a dictionary development of telephone directories in statistics development of box plots finding median several several uh, uh, computations will start only upon sorting only after sorting and uh, justifiably justifiably there are multiple algorithms there are more than one dozen algorithms just which will just do sorting sorting exercise selection sort bubble sort merge sort radix sort quick sort heap sort okay there are many one algorithm claiming superiority about the other algorithms okay uh, anyway in sorting the elements are compared okay how many how many times this comparison takes place is the issue if number of comparison happens during the sorting procedure which which happens to be less then such an algorithm can be called as an efficient algorithm okay anyway there are two desirable properties a sorting algorithm has to possess it is uh, sorting algorithm being in place and sorting algorithm being in st uh, being stable okay stability and being in place are the two characteristic desirable characteristic features of a of a sorting algorithm okay um, if sorting algorithm does sorting within the same array by shuffling or by implementing certain strategy then such an algorithm is said to have said to be in place if an algorithm uses several other extra empty algorithm empty arrays then that is not in place uh, examples are there okay merge sort is an example of a of a sorting algorithm which is not in place and so also heap sort that is not in place and there are several algorithms okay there are more than more than half a dozen algorithms which are in place which are in place okay the second property that is stability is about preserving the relative positions of equal valued elements okay we will take an example here is an array okay this is before sorting there are two equal valued elements that is 1 31 here at the first place if this is 0th place this is the first place and 31 again appears in the uh, 0 1 2 3 fourth place okay if uh, uh, second first place is i and the fourth place is j uh, both the numbers are equal valued elements upon sorting it is their location say i dash it will go to 0 1 2 3 4 5th fifth place and this 31, 31 is in the sixth place and this 31 is here and this 31 is there therefore it is stability is stability is maintained this fellow came first and this fellow came second and therefore they are one behind the other okay the relative positions the relative positions of equal valued element remain the same even after sorting if if an if an if a sorting algorithm promises this feature then that particular sorting algorithm is said to be stable okay then comes searching of course we will search for key things we search for important things okay these important things have found their name as key okay we may search for numbers we may search for names we may search in the books okay a particular book okay searching is a searching is a mundane activity it's a mundane activity in our mundane life also in also in algorithmic circles okay several algorithms start with searching only okay there are uh, there are four different methods of course uh, they are one and the same anyway anyway the way the way of approach of searching is little different okay therefore unordered linear search here the array is not ordered okay searching is done searching is done in order to find whether an element called key element an element which is uh, which is important among the lot is present or not okay then in order in in an order linear search this key is to be compared with every other element one by one in a sequential fashion therefore it is linear one by one 
okay, in order to enter into rth element, we will have crossed r minus 1th element in comparison, in the comparison exercise. Okay, ordered linear search. It is a very relatively simple task. If you need to search a key with a value 99, you need not have to search beyond 100 because the array is already sorted. Okay. Anyway, sorting takes a, a some kind of a cost because sorting uh, in order to sort an array which is big, uh, you need to implement a sorting algorithm. But this does not need sorting algorithm, you can, it is a straightforward approach. Chunk search. Consider searching a name in a phone book. One might naturally graph 50 or more pages at a time from the phone book, determine the 50, 50th page, 50 page chunk in which the desired data lies. Okay. The method involves cut the array into chunks of size c, okay, the array being ordered of course, compare x, the element to be searched uh, with the last element of each chunk except the last chunk. If c, if x is greater than that element, if s, chuck the next chunk, if no, that means x should be in the, in that chunk, okay, execute ordered linear search inside the chunk. So, we will take an example to explain this chunk search. Again consider the following array. Let us choose the chunk size of 2, okay. This is one chunk, this is another chunk. There are four chunks over here because there are 8 elements, okay. And we still search for x is equal to 73. First, we cut this array into four chunks of size 2. Second, we compare x with the last element of each chunk. So, 24, 45, okay, 73, okay. C, if x that is that is 73 is greater than that element, okay, 73 is greater than 24, therefore we have to go to the next chunk, okay, 73 is still greater than 45, therefore we have to go to the next chunk, 73 is equal to 73, okay, the key is found over here, therefore there is no need to proceed for the other chunk, okay. That is how it simplifies, it simplifies the entire procedure, it simplifies the entire procedure, okay. A binary search. Binary search is a well known search, it is a very economical, economical procedure, okay. Of course, the sorting is to be done before we implement binary search, okay. The middle element is first located along with its position, the position is none other than mid, okay. The key is compared with the middle element, if the key is greater than the middle element, if the key is greater than the middle element, this is the middle element, then this portion of the array need to be considered. Okay, only this portion of the array need to be considered. If the key element is lesser than the middle element, then only this portion of the element is, this portion of the array is to be considered. Therefore, when we implement binary search, iteration after iteration, the data size is hard into two pieces, into two pieces and only one piece of the array will be considered in every iteration. Therefore, the name binary, therefore the name binary. Uh, anyway, there is a there is a desirable property demanded by any searching algorithm. It is that any searching algorithm should be adaptable for real time systems where dictionary operations are frequent. That means dictionary operations means mm, including a including an entity, deleting an entity, uh, updating an entity. Okay, if these activities are uh, are uh, frequently going on in such a in such a real time application or real time, yeah, real time application, you know, the, the searching algorithm should be amenable, should be amenable, it should be working with real time systems also, okay. Binary search suits well because it is also economical, right. String processing, string by the by is a sequence of characters. These characters could be anything among typographic characters. In the, in the list of ASCII characters. It could be numbers from 0 to 9, okay, it could be capital A up to Z and it could be small a up to Z and, and numbers from 0 to 9. It can be DNA gene, gene sequences also like uh, adenine, cytosine, guanine and thiamine, okay. String processing is most, most of the cases involves matching a string, okay, uh, matching a string in a big text Okay, matching a string in a big text and to, and to search and to find whether it is available or not, okay. The string that is being matched or that is being searched is called as a pattern, okay. This string processing exercise or string matching exercise or also called as pattern matching exercise uh, has found many applications, 
navy string matching, also called as a brute force string matching, Cobbin Corp algorithm, finite automata based string matching, Nut Morris Pratt algorithm, Horspools algorithm, Bayer Moore's algorithm, and Gus Fields Z algorithm. It is particularly applicable in sing DNA fingerprinting. Okay, it is said that arrangement of ACGT or AGCT or ATCG in the in the chromosome decides the the hereditary characteristics of a person. Therefore, in string match in DNA processing or DNA fingerprinting exercise or genome matching, it is typically called. Okay, uh, the the people involved, the people involved will search the existence or occurrence or the place at which a particular combination of A C G T exists. Depending on the location of this combination, okay, the hereditary features of the person can be predicted. Graph problem is the fourth kind of problem. Okay, uh, some problems are graphable. Some problems can be picturized in the form of a graph. For example, uh, transportation problem. Okay, where you need to where you need to plan networks of roads. Then cities will be placed in uh, nodes, and the connectionality between the cities will be will become edges. Therefore, whole lot of transportation planning can be reduced into a graph. And it could be uh, it could be water network. It could be a water pipe network, okay, in a typical city, or it could be oil pipe network, natural gas supply network, or it could be PERT and CPM charts, okay, schedule scheduling scheduling of a program, scheduling of a project, okay. There are many applications where where graphs hold water. First of all, the problem is to be converted into a graph, then you can draw. The graph algorithms, graph algorithms, maybe maybe finding shortest distance algorithms, and maybe resource allocation algorithms, okay, maybe uh, spanning tree algorithm. There are several kinds of problems. It could be transitive closure problems. There could there are several problems associated with graphs. Okay, uh, depending on the problem in hand, we can apply only after converting the problem in the form of a graph. Not all problems are graphable. And graphable problems are the problems which can be which can be transformed into a graph can easily be solved because there exists innumerable number of algorithms. Okay, addressing kinds of problems that may arise with the graphs. But however, there exists two classical graph problems. One is one is as you know, as you all of you must be knowing, trans traveling salesman's problem. There is a salesman. Okay, who has to visit several cities and he can visit only one time and he has to plan his journey in such a way that he will start from this point, he will come back to the same point after visiting all the cities only once, only once. In the melee, in the melee, he will be traveling only for the shortest distance. Okay. The other problem is graph coloring problem. This is about uh, availability of minimum resources and distributing the minimum resources it's a resource allocation problem, exactly speaking, but anyway, it is called as a graph coloring problem. It is not uh, we, by telling graph coloring problem, we never mean that we have to pay in each and every node of a graph. Anyway, anyway, the problem statements comes like this way, uh, like this: given minimum number of colors, you have to paint every node in such a way that no two neighboring colors are the same. So, in this in this example, in this picture, we have only green, blue, and red. Okay, there are several nodes, and uh, the nodes are painted in such a way that none of the neighboring nodes will possess same color. Same color. Graph problems are recently have been have been implemented in design of very large scale integrated circuits. Design of very large scale integrated circuits. They have found applications in this uh, real world application. That is very real SI designs. Then comes geometric problems. Geometric problems arise. Uh, with respect to points, lines, planar figures, polygons, and with respect to three-dimensional objects like ellipsoids and paraboloids, in terms of finding their volume, okay, irregular paraboloids, irregular ellipsoids, okay, uh, it has uh, uh, these problems will arise mostly in uh, in geometric geometric problem categories, okay, 
and it may be finding the volume between the irregular boundary or it may be finding the surface area of an irregular uh, irregular three dimensional object something like this okay there are two classical problems of this category it could be convex hull problem or closest pair problem convex hull problem is all about okay there are several points in the space okay configuring a shape and can you draw a polygon our shortest polygon of course shortest polygon which is convex in nature okay so that every point is included in this shortest polygon okay shortest convex polygon smallest convex polygon let me say that okay convexity is a property wherein if you select any two points on the boundary of this polygon if you if you connect them if you connect them that connecting line will also pass through within the within the figure i repeat convexity is a property where if you select two points on the periphery of a polygon and if you join them if you happen to join them it will pass within the polygon okay such a property is called as convexity and smallest convex hull and the smallest convex polygon is called as convex hull the the unusual property of this convex hull is it will include all the points in the set all the points in the set convex hulls have been extremely used exclusively used in uh, digital image processing okay closest pair problem given innumerable number of points in cartesian space okay you need to find out one pair one pair which maintains the smallest distance for obvious reasons this comes in implementation of some machine learning algorithm called uh, support vector machine okay closest pair problem right combinatorial problem this is a branch of mathematics called combinatorics or otherwise i can say combinatorial problems are very well stated very well explained in branch of mathematics called as combinatorics combinatorics deals with combinatorial objects like permutation combination finding subsets in a set finding partitions in the space okay uh, planning calendars planning schedules and solving constrained optimization problem okay uh, in solving combinatorial problem it so happens that we will divide the problem into sub problem and we will find the solutions for this sub problem then we will combine the solutions small solutions into a into a into a solution for the complete problem therefore this combining effect this combining process brings the name into combinatorial some authors do say that the combinatorial problems comes in combination of problem let us say finding permutation eight permutation let us say eight okay eight factorial nine factorial that itself is a problem okay and i will add a condition to this okay uh, develop permutation of r objects from n objects okay make a permutation of r objects sorry n objects selecting r at a time combination also okay and optimization uh, optimization problems also comes in combination because optimization problem involve involve framing objective equation that itself is a problem then we we have to satisfy the constraints several conditions that is another problem so problems comes in combination therefore combinatorial problems okay the solutions for them will not be available in a nutshell okay it should be broken into small problems and once again the solution small solutions have to be combined in order to obtain the total solution there are classical examples of this combinatorial problems shortest round trip also called as shortest hamiltonian circuit given a given a system of nodes can you draw can you make a circuitous journey okay with whose length is minimum okay knapsack problem okay this is a, this this problem is a combinatorial problem deals with a bag you are given a bag of a particular volume and you are asked to you are asked to put up you are you are asked to pick up objects of different volume okay with different values and you have to you have to insert those uh, those artifacts or whatever those things in such a way that volume will never be exceeded and also you will collect highest value okay it is something like something like given a universe 
okay you will find uh, with elements with elements with various values then you find a subset subset okay uh, based on a condition so that uh, the the total volume of this subset or total uh, value of this particular subset uh, should not exceed a particular value then still you have to find a subset okay so it comes with a condition knapsack problem is also a combinator linear programming of course this is an operation research problem okay wherein uh, an optimization a uh, an objective function is optimized with this with the several constraints okay and of course uh, we see the explaining all these problems as an examples of combinatorial problems is not in the scope of this tutorial therefore i am just introducing as to what these problems are that's all numerical problems numerical problems arise in technological and and scientific circles okay uh, numerical problems are the problems which can match objects of continuous nature okay numerical methods is once again branch of mathematics okay continuous functions are dealt there okay uh, solving system of linear and non linear equations system of equations okay this is a numerical problem these are a linear equation set of linear equations you need to find the value of v value of x and value of y and value of z therefore there are four equations over here and uh, set of equations which are non linear x square y square this is parabolic in nature second degree curves okay and there are four equations over here and evaluating definite integrals okay this is a continuous function it is to be evaluated and you see the answer 682.5 you will get approximate solutions only uh, then solving differential equations something like this okay uh, sound flow and heat flow and all the electromagnetic waves follow uh, they can be framed they can be modeled in the form of differential equations okay therefore it will go to scientific study okay solving differential equations is also a numerical problem okay a majority of problems under this category can be solved only approximately but anyway these are also kind of problems right there are bunch of numerical algorithms available like range kutta method newton newton raphson method there are several methods already available okay an algorithmist after identifying a given problem to be based under numerical problem category he can draw any algorithm available or appropriate algorithm available and then he can he or she can solve the problem so i end up this tutorial and you please kindly watch for the tutorial number 5 wherein i am going to conclude the fundamentals of ada in tutorial number 5 until then goodbye good day